Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dice to Roll, the queerest platform podcast on the planet where you ask hard questions like, does Rova Gug have puss puss? Does Rova Gug have puss puss? No! <laughs> Why would you? No! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about this fucking spider demon that's in the center of the earth having puss puss. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Who the hell I have arachnophobia, that? man. I don't need this. Who is it is it hell? worse? Is it worse if Robogoog have puss puss or if Robogoog have peen? I think all realities are horrible. Can we at least have like what a Ken doll situation down there? What? Oh. Have. Oh, well, you'll be so pleased. Uh, will I? <laughs> you'll be so pleased to hear the answer to this one. Male spiders don't have penises. Surprise me. Great. Anyone. That's awesome. Uh, Instead, uh. they possess two stubby appendages called pedipalps. Hold on, hold on. I don't think you can hear it through my mic when I'm doing a bit. I'm calling 911. <laughs> <laughs> now, hello, 911. What's your emergency? Yeah, hey, the fucking CIA, this guy, this one right here. Kill this him. This guy's talking about Rova Good Puss Get his ass. Talking about Puss Puss. Oh, you go get him. Someone. <laughs> Someone, please, uh, if we can, like, put in the fucking FBI open up, like, bit somewhere. I'll put it on in the background. Yes, please. So, so, <laughs> but, okay, now he might have pedipalps, but also uh, he is a giant spider you... with, like, a huge uh. mouth. It, it, he doesn't follow regular spider anatomy. Are you, Dairy. like, trying to make him have a pussy, bro? Dairy. <laughs> Do you not want... Look, I'm sick of this, right? I run this fucking <laughs> podcast, and you guys say, Hey, Derry, have more transmask representation. I'm like, what about Rovagog? Derry, can <laughs> you... Not... Can you... Can you shut the fuck up? And <laughs> let's let's follow the rules of think for a fucking second. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it important? Is it fucking necessary? Is it is kind? Is it This is none of these things. <laughs> I... Does Rovagog have plus plus? Oh, I knew he was going to say that again. <laughs> Kill yourself, and I mean it. I, you're I, so I, lucky you're not in California right now. <laughs> We'd like to play some Pathfinder before it's, I get into legal trouble. It's I don't know if I want to play. I don't know if I want to play any game with you ever again. After that, <laughs> that's too bad. Uh, so long as you're trapped within my endless maze, you can't stop playing. God, fucking damn it! What man. if we you just destroy your... the walls? <laughs> There's more maze beyond it, bro. It's just maze, as far as the eye you can see. You think you can stop me? <laughs> Historically, it's worked. <laughs> Adamantine fists, baby. Historically, history up. hasn't had me in it. <laughs> That's such a raw lie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would we like to play some Pathfinder? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Get me we're we're doing this. my favorite thing, which is talking big game before an important session. Um, <laughs> previously in Fists of the Ruby Phoenix... Our heroes journeyed to the jungle observatory, seeking the story of a caged bird woman. You found her and also discovered that the telescopes and orreries surrounding this jungle observatory were in fact giant robots bent on destroying you. You defeated these robots and were able to talk to the woman, a canary who let you know that somewhere on this island, a child is missing its mother, and you have been tasked with finding that child. But you don't know where exactly where the kid is, so you're going to keep looking for a while. And where you decide to start out is in the crater. The home of Oni's mask on this island. There, Masami, you found Minako Torigoshi, one of the highest ranking members of Oni's mask. A kitsune necrographer who cuts off the tails of her kitsune victims and wears them as her own. You guys are now teaming up against her and a whole plethora of Oni's Mask Ninjas who are jumping out from the darkness, ready to plunge knives into your necks and take your beating hearts to their master, Ginhara the Black Winged. So everyone, do we want to hop into character? Sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Masami, Sanku, and Shuji, you all stand in front of Minako Torigoshi the Many-Tailed, the tiefling kitsune who is coming for Masami. Jumping from the darkness behind you, there's about a dozen, maybe two dozen ninjas, all of whom are sweeping up to you, ready to kill you. I want to ask before we start, how is everyone doing? Let's start with... Senku, how are you doing right now? Ninjas to the front, ninjas to the back. What's going on? You're in a crater. I think Senku um, is aware that this is incredibly important to Masami. He's trying to focus on like solutions. How do I stop these guys from getting any closer? There's a bunch of there's a bunch of ninjas to the back of of, of them. How does he stop these guys? That's mostly what he's like right now. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think he's focused very emotionally right now. I mean, he always is, but like he's trying to be a little logic boy. Chuji, how are you doing, bud? Got ninjas up the ass, man. Yeah, there's this place is crawling with ninjas. Can't believe it. They're um, on their hands and knees, just crawling around. I don't like that. Chuji is... They don't like the numbers. I'll give you that. They're not a massive fan of the, the number, the sheer number of uh, ninjas that are in this area right now. Mm-hmm. Um, probably we uh, would be a little bit more uh, thrilled if there were less. Uh, so I think that's going to be their first plan to lessen the number of that. And... Perhaps most pressingly, Masami Takahara, as you clutch the head taking katana in your hands and stare down the boogeyman of your childhood, how are you doing? Oh, how indeed. Um, They are trying to think of all of the possibilities that this could go and everything that they can do to both lessen the numbers and fucking murder Minako. So it's go. It's this is going to be a duel to the death, right? Yes, this is. No mercy. We we're. It's going to be a fatal fight. Got it. Yes. For Masami, this is a fatal fight. As she stares you down, Minako Torigoshi, she has two Kusari Gama, one in each hand, which she's spinning around quickly. You've seen these at work, Masami. They made a point of showing you when you were a child. Mm. She uses those Kusari Gama to take tails. Mm-hmm. And now as she's rushing towards you with this sick smile on her face, she says, Don't worry, I'll be clean. It's in my best interest to put you down swiftly. Try as you like. I'm serious when I say that those tales are not yours. Then you'll just have to take them from me. Gladly. I'll have your head too. (laughs) With that, she is rushing you, Masami. And I want all of you to roll me initiative. I love rolling. 47. Very nice. 49. Very nice. 44. Okay. Top of the order. Shi Chuji, it is you. With your blinding speed, you are able to move first. Faster than the ninjas, faster than Masami and Sanku. What do you do as you see these monsters surrounding you on all sides? They're so fast and so cool. Um, I maybe want to use an item... Okay, what item? And maybe, and maybe would like to. What about the thing I apparently got last session? Uh, the flaming star. Okay, that is currently like tied, I think, to your belt, so you don't have to spend an action taking it out. You can just use its abilities. Sick. Um, Chuji is going to activate their fire st- or their fucking flaming star and cast fireball at that. You know that little, little group right here. The what? Uh, the ninja group. T- okay, so for context. Um, there's two ninja groups. These are basically troops, um, and they are going to be rushing you. You are going for the one that is closer to you, that is on the bottom right, right? Yeah. Okay, so you whip around, and describe to me how this looks. You're not casting fireball. You're basically doing martial arts that produces a fireball effect. How does it look? Um, I think that they spin on their heel towards that group, um, Mm -hmm. and almost like they're pitching. Um, they, uh... Like, their hand brushes uh, um, the, the Flaming Star on their belt, and as if they're pitching, they quite literally throw what becomes a fireball at them. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this little bead of light follows your punch as you go, and then it explodes into a blast of fire and envelops them, right? Yeah. Okay. So that is going to be a 32. Uh, that doesn't save. Okay, cool. They are going to take that damage. How much damage is it? 
Let's see. Uh, it's a fourth level fireball, so it's going to be it's going to be 27 damage. Okay, Chuji, fire scorches into this group of ninjas. Most of them like basically dash out away, but like some of the fire scorches into them as they're like surging. And this mm -hmm. dozen or so ninjas, they're like running head down, arms out towards you with their weapons drawn. You have one action left, Chuji. Ain't this a conundrum? I fucking hate having one uh <laughs> one action left. Um I don't exactly have an area that I would like be better in unless I move behind uh Monaco. <laughs> you absolutely um, could like get behind her and get ready for Masami to flank. That's true. I'm gonna get behind Monaco. Okay. You dash behind Monaco. She's like, I think she like swerves to avoid you and she's still charging Masami before like she like looks over her shoulder and realizes what you're doing. <laughs> and Masami, it's your turn. What do you do? Minako's in front of you. Chuji's dashed behind her. There are, set, like like I said, about two dozen ninjas like jumping you from like the back. What do you do? Uh, they are going to run up to Minako. Second action, I think, is going to be a spell strike. Okay. Okay, that's a 33. <laughs> Uh, a tree tree is going to be a miss against Minako. Okay. You um, could use your hero point if you wanted to. Actually, yeah, I have two. <laughs> okay, go for it. Better, it's 46. A 46 is going to be a hit, Masami. Roll me that damage. Okay, damage is 18. Okay, she takes it. Very nice. But that's not where it ends, right? No, that is not, because uh, they used a spell strike with a gouging claw. Mm-hmm. And the damage from that is 41. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. uh, Masami, mm -hmm. you slash into Minako with your Kitsune claw and your katana together, and she is sent stumbling a little bit as she rebounds herself, trying to keep an eye on both you and Chuji. Uh, she grins in your face and says, not shabby, Reiko. Where did you learn that one? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> uh, is that your turn, Masami? Uh, yes. Run up and spell strike. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, it is now, unfortunately for you, Minako's turn. Okay. And Minako is going to use both of those Kusaragama. And she is going to double slice. Okay. So she's going to attack you twice, Masami. Mm -hmm. And they're both going to use her max multiple attack penalty. So instead of a minus five on her second attack, they'll both be at her full ting. Okay. So that's going to be... Lol. <laughs> a miss on the first one. Okay. Yeah, 36. Don't hit. But a 17 plus whatever, that is a 51. That is a hit. Yeah, 51 hits. <laughs> That Kusari Gamma, the first one misses, but the second one comes so fast you have no time to protect against Masami. That's 28 slashing damage as she cuts into you and kind of grins this horrible fox smile as blood spills. And she is then going to uh, dash you again, and this time she's going to use a Kyai Strike. She follows up her blow with a terrifying roar in your face. She howls at you, Masami. And mm -hmm. immediately... No save. You are frightened. What? Okay. She grins in your face now as you visibly flinch and says, Still afraid of the big bad fox, it would seem. Come on now. It's not too late to give up. I'm not that child. We shall see. And that is going to be Minako's turn. Sanku, it's your turn. Masami and Minako are dueling against each other. Chuji is behind Minako, ready to kick her ass, literally. Did I mention the ninjas? There's a lot of ninjas. They're coming at you. I've decided to make that as difficult as possible. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> Senku is going to cast Burning Blossoms. Aha. Okay, Senku. You're going to do this again. Hit me. Um, I think I'm going to put it down just so that uh, Masami and Chuji, and also the box lady, aren't in its, like, radius. Mm hmm Okay, so this beautiful tree blossoms like it's in uh, time-lapse, 
and puts out these hauntingly beautiful flaming white flowers that start to drop from it. And this is going to start hypnotizing them and gathering their attention, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so they need to make will saves? Yes. Okay, so the first group rolled a 30 tree. Uh, no. That fails. Okay, the second group just rolled a 30. That is a crit fail. Uh-oh. And Minako here, a 38. That also fails. Oh my god! Sanku, this burning blossom catches all of the ninjas in this crater. Every single one of them stops and turns and looks at this hauntingly beautiful tree, and they are all fascinated, which means that they're going to have to spend one action on their turn walking towards the tree. Um, and anyone who ends their turn under the tree will take damage. That damage will break out one of the groups of ninjas and Manako, but the other one that crit failed, they're just going to keep staring at this fire forever. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, is that your turn, Sanku? Pretty sure that it is, but let me make sure. Yeah, it is. Okay. Lolo's on your shoulder, Sanku. And he says, mm-hmm. excellent work, Sanku. You've really got them ca- uh, under your spell now. But be careful. They're not out of the game. You're going to need to use even stronger magic. I have ideas. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what I like to hear, young man. Senku looks very proud of himself. <laughs> um, it's going to be Oni's Mask Ninjas now. The group of ninjas that is not fascinated by the tree forever rushes out towards you, and they are going to attack you with a flurry of attacks. Uh, that is going to be, oh shit, 45 to hit. Uh, that does hit. Okay. Uh, blades, knives, kunai, everything. Stab, stab, stab. Senku, that is going to be 28 piercing and slashing damage. All right. Uh, and with their last action, they're going to use one of their their last action to move back under the tree. Lol. Uh, the other Oni's group is going to rush towards you, Sanku. Okay. Uh, they're also going to attack you before they are compelled to walk back under the tree. Okay. Uh, Sanku, that is a 44 to hit. That hits. Uh, that is going to be another 22 slashing and piercing damage before they are compelled to turn their back on you and walk under the tree. All right. Sanku, will you roll me the fire damage for the ninjas who are currently under the tree? Yes. 18 fire damage to both of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and they both have to make will saves. Well, actually, uh, the one that was uh, that did the crit fail is just permanently... Oh, that's until right. Until the spell ends, yeah. So the other one rolled a 35. And it still doesn't work. They're still fascinated. Okay. Uh, and that is their turn. Yep. And now, she, Chuji, it is your turn. If you attack Minako, she will be freed from the fascination, but you probably want to kick her ass, so. Oh, wait, there's another item that I haven't used yet, which I could use, or I could save for later. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd say use it now. If, it, if it's on your mind, use it now. Fuck it. Okay. Um, I'll let, I'll let Michelle me deal with their own stuff. Um, mm mm-hmm. Apricot of Bestial Might. <gasps> Chuji, you pull out this perfect, beautifully, almost like translucent apricot from your bag. It is so succulent. It is the prize you won for the boar and tiger exhibition match. And Chuji, what happens as uh, you take a bite out of it? I turn into a fucking Ganondorf, baby. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah. I turn into some creature. This is do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I hold the fuck out animal style. Uh and I wanna go beat the shit out of these out of these oni masks. Okay. So Chuji, describe monster Chuji for me. Just to get everyone at home a little turned on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think um anyone turned on should check themselves into a hospital. <laughs> you are so mean to every single one of our trans mask listeners. Anyway. I say as a monster fucker. Um, <laughs> ooh, I haven't thought about it, but Monster Chuji, I think that... Hmm, I think they bear a bit of resemblance to their dad. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Uh, I think Monster Chuji has really uh, um long, sickly-looking, fucked-up uh, lavender hair. Um, it's all spiky at the end. Uh, and they don't look like... 
a bat, but they look like what kind of more monstery vampires look like, I think. Right. When people draw vampires like on all fours, that's what I'm imagining. Mm. Oh, do you have like the kind of like primate, uh, like top heavy, crawl like walking on your fists or what is it? Not fists per se, but walking on uh, hands as well as feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There's claws. It's it's less of like, I don't know if it's like brute monster per se, even though Chuji is themselves a brute. I do say you will gain a tusk attack from this. Oh, fuck yeah, then that's what their fangs are. Ooh, okay, Chuji, dare you go. Monster Chuji explodes out as you take an action to eat this thing, and you turn into a terrifying beast. You have two... One action left. One action left, because it was one action to take out the fruit, and another dark drum. You know? How long does it last? It lasts for an entire minute. Goddamn, waste of oh. time then. Uh, I'm gonna run up to them. So okay, I can so the next turn. you dash into the fire of the tree, which, because you have, I will remind you, not only do you have a resistance to all uh, physical damage, your uh, cool item, the uh, the star, the flaming star, mm. that gives you resistance to fire. Hot as fuck. Literally. So, Literally. Chuji, you let out a bestial roar as you run into that flaming storm and start getting ready to beat the shit out of these ninjas. All right, Masami, it is your turn. Minako is no longer flanked, but you can see that she is being distracted by this burning blossom. Chuji just turned into a fucking uh, Saiyan ape. <laughs> what do you do? I think Kimisami is going to go into Arcane Cascade. Okay. A storm of katanas appears around you, Masami. And in your hand, the head-taking katana whispers, 49. 49. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, I don't think Masami really minds the, uh, the whisper <laughs> in their head. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be 50. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to go in for a distracting spell strike. Okay. Uh, while you're uh, we, uh, distracting magic with one hand to an answer spell strike, make a spell strike and faint on okay. my target. So make me not faint. Deception check, please. Yup. <laughs> okay, there we go. 47. Uh, 47 is going to be a success, Misami. How do you faint her? Ooh, I want to say that Misami actually, like, with a, uh, within a split second, they distract her by showing all nine tails for a minute. Mmm! And they kind of fl uh, wave together in a flurry behind them before reverting back to two. Almost like, hey, are you sure you saw what you saw? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's flat footed, which will actually balance out your frightened condition. Making that attack roll. Okay. Oh my god, that's a crit fail. Uh, I'm gonna use my last hero point for that one. Good call, honestly, uh... Sally. You're leaving yourself vulnerable to future uh, failures, but let's be real, better to not fuck it up with a critical fail spell strike. Yeah, so let's try that again. Oh no, there's almost no numbers in between 19. Uh, so it's a 48, thank god. <laughs> that is a hit. Not a crit, but a hit. I, I'll take that. I'll take a hit. Christ. So that's going to be a total of 32 damage to her. Okay. Hey. This is... Oh, so I will say, by the way, as this blade attacks, she's no longer fascinated. Yeah, that sword right. cuts into her neck, and she lets her... Yeah! And that glimmer leaves her eyes. She's no longer looking at the tree. She's looking at you. Oh, that's okay, because uh, that spell strike had Mirror's Misfortune on it. Ooh! Now remind me what Mirror's Misfortune does. I split into two selves. There is a version, there is a real Masami and a Mirror Masami. Mm -hmm. um, if the creature takes a hostile action against the duplicate, the illusion will shatter and inflict bad luck on the attacker's next few attacks as mis uh, Misfortune's toll for um, shattering the mirror. Okay. However... <laughs> However, because I'm also in Arcane Cascade, mm -hmm. um, Arcane Shroud comes into play and the real Masami <laughs> goes invisible. Okay, so let's see, we'll see if she can tell your little party trick in a second. But yes, Masami, you replace yourself with an illusion clone, which may catch her off guard. Mm -hmm. But yes, you replace yourself with this mirror Masami and... Minako, as she's stumbling back, having been caught in the neck by this, she squints and says, Oh, 
Thank you for bringing me back to this world, Reiko. I was almost distracted by your friend's pathetic attempt at an enchantment. <laughs> oh, believe me. I want to kill you myself. <laughs> then do your best, Reiko. I know I will. And it is her turn. And I think she will spend an action making a perception check because she saw something happen. She doesn't know what it was, but she saw something. Mm. So that is going to be a perception check. That is a... That's a 42, Misami. And this is against the spell DC, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a success, so the creature is unaffected. Okay. So right now, she can tell that that Misami in front of you is a mirror's misfortune. Yeah. And she knows not to attack it. But she won't know next turn. Okay. So she looks around and says, Oh, and a most duplicitous trick. You really are quite a kitsune. But tell me, why do you hide behind a human face? Are you ashamed of being a kitsune? Or could it be? And with that, she whips out her uh, weapon as fast as she can, trying to attack you. She needs to make a flat d20 roll to see if she can figure out where you are. That is a 16. She gets the right space. Let's see if she can actually hit you with her Sarigama. Mm -hmm. She can't. That's a 39. It misses by Oops. a hair's length. But Masami, it's so close. And she knows she has you. And she smiles and says, Could it be that I frightened you so much as a child that you can't wear your own fox face in front of me? Oh. <laughs> And she is then going to do something strange. Mm -hmm. And it's that uh, she's going to not leave your space. This isn't intentional, but she does like, she just runs past you. Not so far that she's away from you, but she's now turning to be next to Sanku. And she grins and says, let me show you how frightened I can make you. Well, okay. She needs to make another will save to see if she's fascinated by the tree, lol. She does. That's a 45. She's not fascinated by the tree. Yeah, that, that yeah. saves. Uh, Sanku, Renata. it is your turn. Minako is not looking at Masami. She's looking at you. Meanwhile, Chuji's run into your firestorm is getting ready to beat the shit out of uh, ninjas while they're in giant ape mode. Vampire? Ape? Monster. Not they're even monster. ape. <laughs> monster. What is it? What? I said it was an ape. Yeah. Ganon? Yeah. Kind yeah, Ganon. Ganon yeah. More more pig than ape, I think. <laughs> okay, boar! <gasps> boar Chuji! Yeah, boar. Boar Chuji. I think Senku's like... And then he slams his his staff into the ground. Um, because I'm uh, casting summon kaiju, I think. Okay. So, Sanku, there is a rumble of power as you start summoning up something incredible. Something mythical. But just as you do that, Sanku, there is a slash of steel and there is someone going for your throat. Minako is trying to kill you. That is an attack of opportunity. If she crits, your spell is disrupted and you lose your 10th level spell for the day. Okay. That is going to be a 49 to hit. Well, it's not a crit. <laughs> okay, you are so lucky. That is a hit. That's going to be 38 slashing damage as she goes for your throat, Sanku. Uh, okay. Does that, uh, does it stop the spell? I don't know. Nope, the spell's still happening. You slam that staff down even as you stumble back, blood gushing out of your neck. But it missed all the arteries. And Sanku, as the world shakes and something massive emerges, what is it that comes out? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let me pick from my, from my Christmas list. You have so many. Oh, um, Agmazar the Star Titan. Oh my god, you're going to Agmazar? Oh, the he was the just creature right that there. destroyed Bun Mu? The one that fought King Mogaru? I didn't know that that was him. The one from space? <laughs> Made by space liches? <laughs> I didn't know that that was him. <laughs> Saku, you it. summon up the monster that destroyed Bunmu. This being made of pure negative energy, it looks like the first angel from Evangelion, you know? <laughs> um, This horrifying, 
tall, gaunt, uh, almost plasma creature emerges and lets out a shriek as it stands above Oni's mask, towering over this tree that you've conjured. Like, that's a tall-ass tree. It is like a piece of grass compared to the monster that is now standing up in the middle of this fight. I suppose that all of my enemies are within 100 feet. First of all, it says each foe. So yes, not, only enemies, not my friends, only my enemies. Um, there's something silly about uh, Sanku, who is so cute, summoning Agmazar the Star Titan. <laughs> I need a fortitude save. Okay, from all of them, from including um, Minako. Yes, because it's all they're all within a hundred feet. Okay, well Minako gets a forty-eight. That um does save, but I believe it's not a crit success so I'm yeah it's just sure a regular success half so uh the second one gets a 41 and the last one gets a 36 okay uh so one of them fails okay so that's funnily enough the one that had crit failed earlier <laughs> 70 damage <gasps> 16 d8 negative damage yeah how does this look what happens channel void. Each foe in a hundred foot emanation takes 16 d8 negative damage. Um, so I, th- I literally think that it is just... I-, I think it's just feeling them there. Yeah, I think Agmazar, this giant undead space kaiju, looks down at them, raises up a hand, and just starts pulling their soul... No! What am I saying? It uses its classic attack. It shoots a fucking death beam out of its eyes into these guys, and it raises true several of them. And I think one or two of the ninjas do straight up die. Um, (laughs) Because you have done significant damage to them. This does remove the fascination on all of them, I will say. Yeah. Because they just took a shit ton of damage. Yeah. Uh, Minako takes half damage. One of the groups takes half damage. But, like, that's an insane amount of damage from the undead monstrosity that brawled against Mogaru hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And Agmazar lets out this unearthly wail that shakes the island. And is that your turn, Sanku? I'm pretty sure that takes three actions, yeah. (laughs) Okay. It is Oni's Mask's turn. So the extremely injured group of Oni's Mask realize that if they stay under this tree for much longer, they will all probably die. So they start to uh, retreat. And by retreat, I mean dash past Chuji into uh, the space outside of the tree to fight Masami and Sanku. (laughs) That's crazy, because... Hey, yo! Woof! Okay, so that's a crit. That's a 50 to hit against uh, Chuji. What's 42 times 2, Derry? 84? Yeah. Chuji, you get all of them! What the fuck does this look like? Describe to me how Monster Chuji stops all the ninjas from leaving, crushing them all. They clothesline the fuck out of them into the floor. It doesn't, like, stop when they, like, reach their arm out to, like, halt them in place. They literally take that momentum and crush them into the ground. Because you get- there was maybe six or seven of them. And you get them all. And it's just lethal? I assume it's lethal, right? Yeah. Cool. Chuji, you smash, destroy, unleash the beast. And they are all dead. Nice work. Slay. Uh, the other group is going to, I think, just jump you instead, Chuji. <laughs> okay. Um... They all dash on top of you and start trying to cut you to shreds. They are going to be using their crew flanking turn, uh, their crew flanking ability. Sorry, mm-hmm. they're going to use their team flanking ability, which means that you are flat-footed against these attacks. Okay. So that's going to be a thirty-five against your AC minus two. Five. You're lucky you had that minus two because that would have been a crit fail, but it's just a fail. Okay, Chuji, I think. They're about to jump you. You turn and roar like fangs glinting in the fire. And then you just like start decking them. And I think a few of them jump back. You are like holding down these guys. <laughs> um, with their next action, their last action even, um, they're just going to try attack you again. And that's going to be a 33. Now that's a crit fail. Even Fuck. with the minus two. Brutal collision. 
Hey, Chuji. They didn't make a fortitude save or become stunned. Isn't Ooh, that funny? That is pretty funny. That is a fortitude tree against your, uh, your class DC? That does just barely pass. Okay. So I think you, like, they're all jumping you, and you try to grab at a feud and just hold them in your hands. But they... They, like, slip out, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're, like, surrounding you on all sides, fighting you back. You roar. And they are going to take 6d6 fire damage. Right, Senku? Yes. Okay, roll that for me. And they are not... I think they pass on their saves and not become fascinated. 25. Okay, a 25 damage to them. They're, that fire continues raining down on them. And Chuji. It is now your turn. At the end of your turn, you're going to need to start making uh, saves against the fire as well. Mm -hmm. Because you are standing here, but you have resistance to it. Yeah. What do you do against these guys? Because they're all over you. I kill them, I destroy them, I start eating them. Okay. Horrifying, kind of hot, go for it. Ooh, I use a hero point is what I do. Hmm, that won't be great. Oh, my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in between. That was a crit. Shuji, that is a crit. Was, uh, crit. Uh, so that's 48 times 2. That's going to be 96 damage. Ayah. Shuji, that kills all but one of them. There's literally one ninja left. How do you do this? <laughs> that was just one action. <laughs> How do you do this? I did say I eat them. Oh my god, do you bite into them and shit? Yeah. Dear lord. I might be okay. a little bit fucked up even for Chuji. <laughs> I mean, you're a monster right now. That's you, true. You're not yourself. That's true. I don't think you eat them, but I do no. think there's a lot of teeth involved and maybe yeah, a little bit of blood fighting. here and there. A know. lot of blood, perhaps, with those tusks. You rip these ninjas to shreds. But Sam, you've uh, seen these ninjas at their best. You know they aren't pushovers. Seeing Monster Chuji do that, kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> like, you and Chuji aren't like that. But kind of hot. <laughs> um, there's one guy left, Chuji. I look at him. He darts his eyes around. He's not sure what to do. I stalk towards him. Are you trying to intimidate him? I open my mouth. Are you trying to intimidate him? <laughs> trying to kill him. Oh, you okay? You're killing him. Cool. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight is a hit. Roll me that damage <laughs> against this guy with six HP. Twenty-seven. <laughs> oh my god. What do you do to him? <laughs> I don't know if that's safe for airlines. <laughs> You know what? Gory discretion shot. The light, the camera cuts, and you see like Sanku Blood spatter on horrified. The floor. <laughs> There's yeah. a tasteful silhouette on the floor, and the camera is panned up towards Chuji in monster form. <laughs> yeah, and Chuji are covering Gore right now. Uh, and that's them dead. And you have one action left. I love flanking. Yes, I do. I love flanking. How about you? Okay, so you rush out of the fire, which means you won't take fire damage this turn. And you are standing on the other side of Minako from Masami. Although Masami's invisible right now, but you are up, up in Minako's business. Yeah. Masami, it is your turn. Um, holy shit, Chuji just did that. But also Minako just hurt Sanku. Agmazar the Star Titan is there and slowly walking towards you all. Okay. Um, the ground is shaking. There's undead energy pulsing through your veins. <laughs> what do you do? Um, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is a lot going on right now. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I have an idea. Okay. Um, I think Masami is going to pop out of invisibility because once you attack, you just pop out, you pop back into existence. Um, mm -hmm. so they are going to pop back up with a... Uh, focus spell popping up with four spangs, so that is an immediate uh, 14 damage. Okay, um, and Aku takes that. Then they are going to spell strike again with a refresh spell strike. <laughs> okay, with telekinetic projectile. Okay, go for it. 40. 
Uh, that is a hit. Roll me that damage. Okay, so then that's a 22 damage. Okay, she'll take that. Very nice. And then with telekinetic projectile, the projectiles being all of the ninja weapons from uh, her <sighs> fallen comrades. Oh my god, you Dio knife her? Uh huh. Knives fucking fly at her from all angles. Knives, katanas, shuriken. Mm -hmm. The works. 43. She takes that damage, and it's like they stab into her from all angles, and she lets her. Ah! Mm. Oh my, how you've grown! You would have made an excellent student if you weren't prey, Reiko. I'm almost proud of you. You're just like me. I'm not the one who spent all of my free time terrorizing a child. <laughs> and see how has it paid off for me. Can't you see the romantic irony in it all? Of course it would end this way. But I'm taking you with me, you bitch. Masami, that is your turn. Yep. And Minako is going to fling around and try to attack you. Okay. I'm going to make a roll of 1d2 to see which version she attacks. Okay. Heads, it's you. Tails, it's the fake version. Okay. That's Tails. <laughs> she attacks the fake version. What happens when she attacks the mirror's misfortune? I think, because what Masami likes to do with um, their clones is they like to dash between each other at, cer at certain points just to fake out and make everyone second guess. Uh, but because Minako is so fucking bloodthirsty, she doesn't realize it when the mirror, like, dashes in front of Masami for a second mm. as they backflip. Or cart- or, um, as they do a, a backwards cartwheel. And it just- the shards shatter in her face. Ooh! Okay, what's the mechanical effects here? What happens? So, with, uh, Mirror's Misfortune... Um... Does she have to make a will save or something? Uh, the illusion shatters into mirror-like shards, inflicting a bad luck on the attacker's next few attacks as misfortune's toll for shattering the mirror. Uh, the attacker must attempt a will save, yeah. Yep. 38! Failure! <clears throat> so, for the next hour, uh, the creature must roll its next two attacks twice and take the lower result. For two attacks for an hour. Oh my god. And to be fair, she probably won't last that long. <laughs> yeah, well, she sees you now, and she snarls. And I think she just barks at you, and she's gonna try slash you again. Okay. Misfortune. <laughs> oh, this isn't gonna go well for her. <laughs> I'm counting on it. Well. <laughs> well, one of those would have been a plus 19 to, like, a 19 to hit. Yeah. Plus or whatever. So the lower is uh, a 40, which is a miss by tree. Yep. And I think she's just so angry that she's going to try one last time. <laughs> okay. Minus 10, disadvantage. Girly, that's a crit fail. That is indeed a crit fail. She rushes. She's attacking so hard, but it's bad luck. She's trying to basically bulldoze through the bad luck immediately. Mm hmm And Masami, that breaks her weapon. <laughs> her kusari gama you catch it with your katana and then like kind of counter attack and the kusari gama shatters into pieces she still has one in her free hand but you see for a moment an expression you never expected to see on the face of minako Torigoshi the many tailed surprise sanku witch prince of the sea <laughs> it's your turn and agman's to star titan is walking closer <laughs> What happens this turn? Well, now, I, I believe it's like just an arrive and then depart thing. Mm -hmm. um, so on depart, I need a fortitude save. Okay. Um, and if she uh, fails, uh, she'll be pushed 100 feet away. Well, that's a 39, Sanku. Well, that doesn't save. So she's pushed 100 feet away, right? Yeah. How, how does this happen? It's called gravitic repulsion. So I think that as Agnazar the Star Titan, like, 
leaves in, in like an implosion. I, I think it's just like a boom that like throws her backwards. Okay. So I'm going to give her fall damage for 100 feet. So she, the closest wall is on the other side of Masami. It's 20 feet away. So she's going to take the remainder of fall damage. She's slammed into that wall as hard as possible. I'm going to give her 80 damage. Awesome. And as she craters into that wall, she looks like she's barely alive. She coughs up blood. She is crushed into that wall. And with that, Agamazar the Star Titan, still standing there, lowers his hand and lets out another unearthly wail before fading into darkness. Well, thanks. And you have three actions left. She has 15 HP left. Um, I think... I don't think Senku wants to do this. <laughs> I don't think Senku wants to be the person uh, that does that. Uh, so I think that Senku is going to cast... Would you be okay if I casted Tether on you too? Okay, okay. Um... So that she can't run away? Oh, you're casting Red String of Fate on the two of them? To make sure that Minako can't flee? Oh. That's kind of insanely... <laughs> like, romantic, but not in like, a romantic way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ro romantic slash literature. <laughs> yes, romantic slash literature. As in a destined kill. Is that okay with you? This is okay with me. Okay. Um, then Senku, with his three actions, is going to uh, he's going to cast Red String of Fate on uh, Minako and Masami and then he's going to well, I need a basic reflex save but I mean, I'm going to say she fails it, she's been cratered into a fucking mountain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and <laughs> the crater <laughs> uh, I think Sink is just going to cast um, Life Boost on himself okay, start healing Yeah, Sanky, you start popping a few heals Chuji, it's your turn Minako's been crushed into a mountain. She's tied to Masami. What do you do? Is she about to die? Oh, 100%. <laughs> she's, she's like barely alive. Do you do anything on your turn then? Chuji gives a big monster thumb up. God, I'm sorry. Chuji's so hot. Anyway. Okay. Masami, it's your turn. Minako is pulling herself out of the crater, but she is like barely alive. What do you do? They are walking up. Well, yes, they are not running. They are walking. And they are dragging the blade of the head taker katana on the floor. So it makes a small scraping noise. Mm. Um, once they're immediately at... Uh, once they're immediately at her, they put the blade on her neck and make and make her look up at them and when she looks up they're in kitsune form oh my god my heart fucking skipped a beat you forgot one thing that i was taught while in oni's mask it's always good to make sure your enemy doesn't know what or who you are. Always hide your true self, because if they don't know what you are, you can't get caught. I don't give a damn about what you think of me not being in my kitsune form. This is the form I am comfortable with, and that is it. You have nothing to do with my life now. I don't care what happens to you. All I know is that you're a blight on this world and I'm going to cut you down. Minako looks up into your eyes, Masami. And as she's coughing up blood, she grins and says, You'd have made an excellent ninja. I'm sure I would have. But there's no and there's no way in hell I'm working for any of you. And what do you do now, Masami? You slice off her head. Masami, you cut off Minako Torigoshi the many tails head. And as she goes limp on the floor, 
in your hand, the head taking katana whispers, Fifty. <laughs> and it's over. You've done it. Dice will roll will return after these messages. We now return to Dice Will Roll. Um, as her body tumbles to the floor, Masami looks back towards Chuji and Sanku and says, You might not want to look at this next part. <laughs> Giant Chuji averts their eyes. <laughs> they cover their like they like they look away and they, like hold up a hand over like their you know or over their like peripherals yeah. so they don't see anything. They also cover Shenku's eyes. <laughs> ah, I can, I'm not a baby. <laughs> Lolo says, "What are we not looking at?" He says, "Looking." <laughs> well, yeah, well, Lolo uh, then sees Misami uh, cutting off all of the tails. Oh my god! Okay, he goes. Ah! <laughs> he scampers into the Sanku's bag. Lolo holds on to his own tail. He's like, "Oh god." <laughs> Um, Masami says, uh, it's going to take a second for me to do this, but, um, just give me a second, okay? Um, yeah. Just let us know if you need anything. Uh, well, I do have 12 foxtail-sized graves to dig, if you guys are willing to help with that, at least. Always. Okay. That's really sweet. Masami, take a hero point. Huh. <laughs> Chuji, by now your monster form has worn off. They're handsome again. <laughs> You're already <laughs> handsome. <laughs> but you guys dig this these graves. Did you do anything with her actual body? I think Masami like drags it so it's nowhere near the graves, actually. Mm. Mas uh, Senku and Chuji, how are you two doing as Masami does all this work? You can tell that they're would you say relieved, Masami? There is a jumble of emotions, I think. Um, there's satisfaction. Um, there is a bit of relief. But at the same time, I feel like there's also that... It's a trembling feeling, and they don't know exactly how to pinpoint it. But you know how... Um, whenever you face something that's been either incredibly traumatic or something that's been weighing on you for the longest, longest time mm -hmm. and you finally face it and everything's okay, but you still don't feel okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sanku and Shuji, how are you two doing as you watch Masami do this? It's kind of intense, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. This was a heavy episode. Yeah. How should you feel about the f coming down from the the apricot monster form? Um, <laughs> do they remember what they did? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, unless shit. you prefer, unless you prefer, they don't. Um, let's just think of it like it's a blackout. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't need, they don't need that right now. Not that they had a lot of sympathy for these people to begin with, and that they'd had like a massive problem with it, but that was kind of gruesome. <laughs> Sanku, how are you doing? I think Sanku is worried about Masami. Which is the nature of him. I think I think mostly he's doing the thing where he, he helps a little too close to Masami, like he's trying to tell them, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm not trying to be pushy, but I'm, I'm right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 which is something I think that Sanku does every time that Masami seems upset um, so I think that's what he's doing right now and I think that's how he's feeling mostly just like are they okay are they are they okay I'm, I'm normal I'm not I'm not gonna be pu I'm not pushing <laughs> but he keeps glancing by the end of it it's done 12 graves and a pile of bodies to be uh, set on fire and left and also as you go through her pockets Masami I conjure the deep fragment. I think Masami takes the fragment, but before they show it to any of the others, they uh, kneel before all of the graves and pray. Um, and they say, Your torment is over, and your monster is dead. 
all of you can rest well now. And when they get up, they hand over the shard to Chuji and say, You ready to look at this? Best of time as ever. Okay. They pull out the rest of them and stick them together. Okay. Chuji, you put together the fifth Contra the Deep fragment. Only two remain. And you see a vision. Sindara the Sculptor sits atop a throne of glass, alone. He creates a world in his hand. It is beautiful, magnificent, opulent, detailed. He has spent hours on it. And with a brush of his fingers, it is gone. It has been years now since he took on his student Hao Jin. Centuries. Longer than any human would have lived for otherwise. They had remained friends, even after uh, Hao Jin had outgrown him. For a time, at least. Now, here he sits, alone. She's become quite the sensation across the plains. It seems that perspective of a mortal was fresh enough to garner far more attention in a few decades than Sindar was over centuries. Unbound from the plainer lawfulness of an Aximite like Sindara, Hao Jin's humanity has given her infinite imaginations that she could pull from. Different perspectives, different ideas. It has made her highly sought after in terms of demiplane creation. Especially after the creation of her magnum opus, the Hao Jin Tapestry. It's a masterpiece, even Sindara must admit that. A plain stocked by Hao Jin with people, monuments and entire cities that she collected during her travels. Each location Hao Jin created or placed in the tapestry has its own microclimate, perfectly suited to each and every inhabitant. And all of this contained in a single mundane tapestry. It's incredible. It's a talk of the plains, though some in Axis whisper that to stockpile all of this in one place is... Risky at best. But that doesn't mean she hasn't become a wonder of the Outer Plains. That doesn't mean that people don't flock to her for their own private planes instead of him. That doesn't mean he's not the one left in the dust. Sindara trained up someone and asked for nothing in return, and that nothing is all he is left with. The sculptor sits bitterly as he creates and vanquishes another world alone. It's then that there's a flash of fire. Sindara stumbles, almost expecting Hao Jin to be present, but no. A shadow draws from the darkness. A Fistophilus, a contract devil. They're hairless, with long, curling horns, and an endlessly long contract draping over them. They smile and bow graciously. Sculptor! Greetings! It is a pleasure to meet you. Sindara stands, eyes narrowed. How did you get in here? I have no quarrels with the forces of hell, but for you to appear here breaks several Axis Infernal treaties. You know well that the forces of hell are not allowed this deep into the infinite sin- The Fistophilus raises a hand, interrupting silently. I hope you do not take it rude, but I will not be giving you my name, or the name of my benefactor. I have a business matter to attend to. Sindara stands, fists clenched. What do you mean by that devil? The Vistophilus traces the room. I can tell you and I are both sharp folk who wish to cut right to the chase. Your old news, sculptor. Washed up. Forgotten. When's the last time you made something for someone else? Anyone who's anyone these days wants the phoenix, not the sculptor. Sidara flinches, but remains stoic. Charming words. You came to belittle me, or did you come to ask me to introduce you to the ruby phoenix? I have not spoken to her in shy of a century, 
I suggest you make an appointment with her directly or an attempt to use me to cut line and... Another silent interruption through a raised hand. Master Sindara, you are confused. My benefactor does not want Hao Jin. He wants you. Sindara halts, the wind taken from his sails. What? You heard me. My master has an interesting proposition for a demiplane he once designed. Consider it a, a buffer between his realm and Farazna's, a waiting room where punishment can begin early, as it were, before souls are judged, but, well, only the ones you and I both know are destined to follow us. Hell priests, vile crusaders, tyrants, slavers, you know the sort, people who deserve it. We'd make it, well, a welcoming party. While they await judgment from the boneyard, they can be whisked away into this demiplane, and we can get them familiar with our methods. Cut a few centuries of idling around out of the picture. Sundara blinks but shakes his head. Uh, no, that would be a breach of several more important treaties and... Not so. I have checked, double-checked, triple-checked... The loophole is that so long as the gate to the demiplane resides in the boneyard rather than in hell, then they are technically still in the realm of Phrasma, and we are free to treat them as we want. Sundara is not stupid. You can tell there must be a catch. Why not the phoenix, then, if it's all so above board? The Phistophilus smiles widely. Because you and I both know she wouldn't care for the technicalities, right? Mortals, they care so much for nuance. But you and I, we both care about elemental order. And if this is orderly, then it is all right. Sindara hesitates still. To be wanted, desired, but for something like this? Can he really do it? The Fistophilus raises a hand. At least allow me to show you the project outline. Sandara looks at the throne he was sitting on earlier. The same throne he sat on with Hao Jin many times. The one that Hao Jin has now surpassed. Sandara does not want to be alone anymore. He takes the Fistophilus' hand and shakes it. And with that, the vision ends. That slimy little bug. Senku makes a face. <laughs> wow, how justified. That's not overboard at all. I almost feel bad for how pathetic he is. Well, I was right about the jealousy part, I guess. Yeah. I could have understood motivations if it was just... She didn't care after I did so much for her. But I don't think... I think he really only cares that... I think he mostly cares, at least, that... That she was more successful than him. He wanted her to be in his shadow the rest of her existence, and when she didn't do that, he got all prissy about it. The only thing here is that I can really understand being upset about is her not talking to him. But that is nothing. It that's... certainly doesn't justify what he's done to her. No, that's a talk like human... Ad that's like talk like adults. There must be more Jeez. we're missing to have such a reaction to her. Well, this is years after she left and started going after all the planes. I understand that there's probably not a lot that we could see, but there should be there could be some key things in between that we're missing. Plus it's five out of seven. We're still missing two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This isn't the end yet. We saw him agree to see the deal. We haven't seen what well, happened. What shall we do yet. now, everyone? We've had quite a busy day. Do we want to try take on one more? 
Do we want to rest? We could visit that night parade, the, the night market that uh, that nice tanuki told us all about. Personally, <sighs> I'd like it if we went, if we tried to go to that night market and then rested, because um, I, I can do more spells and stuff today, but my strongest spells are... Um, mm -hmm. I could handle another fight if we got into one, but I don't want to seek out another fight. Let's go see Rakanza then. Yeah. Hey! Masami, Sanku, and Chuji, you return to Kader and ask her for directions. Kader herself is not very certain, because the night market is not something that Sindara created. But after kind of cross referencing the very vague location that um, you were given by Rakanzo, uh, you are able to make your way through the jungle back towards the night parade or uh, back towards where you think the night market is. And you find something, but it's not exactly what you were expecting necessarily. Um, because what you find at the clearing that you expect to find a night per, uh, the night market is a clearing. And in this clearing, you find... Sorry, I'm wait, killing time because I'm trying to get the fucking thing. It's a large, grassy field, strewn with abandoned tents that have blown down in the wind. It's empty. There's nothing here. What do you guys do? Hello? Kader chirps and says, It does not appear that there's anyone there. No kidding. Are you certain you have the right location? Rakanzo? This is where he said. I know he said half of the group is also going to help with the, um, with the ship, but that's only half. Yeah, that's me half of them should be here. Is it nighttime? It's always nighttime here. Oh, right, yeah. Well, fuck. Hmm. Was there something about it at night when you go to sleep? Didn't. Did he say that we had to do something? I swear, it was something about needing to go to sleep. Maybe we set up here and see if we wake up to them. I mean, that's a good idea in general, since we should rest as well. Yeah, I think we should probably rest anyway, so that way Senku and I get our spells back. We all yeah. get some. We all get some rest, and I can also change my spells as well. Yeah. Okay. Lolo curls up on your lap, Masami, and he says, Where are we headed tomorrow? There's three places left, aren't there? The, um... Oh, goodness. There was that scary... That scary, uh, junkyard. There's yeah. the Lake Hill thing. And there's the Champion's yeah. Gate. Well, we can't go to the Champion's Gate just yet until we have everything, I don't think. And unless we want to deal with nightmares now, uh, I think we should go to the other location. The lake? Sure. With the hill? Yeah, just, I don't know if, at the very least for me, I can at least have the awareness to say, right now, I think I need a mental break. <laughs> Well, we must remain vigilant. We were informed by that dastardly Lalo How fellow that there was a wicked nymph in charge of that lake. Uh, I can deal with nymphs. I just can't deal with more trauma. Just give me one day break. Uh, well, I hope that it all turns out well. It would be nice for you all to have a little break, honestly. But uh, for now, shall we try get tucked in and um, rest? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who's keeping watch? Are any of you keeping watch, or are you all trying to go to sleep at the same time? Um, Gigi will take watch first. Okay. okay. <laughs> Masami and Sanku, you two get a good, well-earned rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Chuji, you stay up until one moment, your eyes flicker. And now suddenly, you are not in an empty clearing. 
Dragonflies flit through the tall grass of this field, which is as warm as a late summer evening. Throughout the clearing, all manner of yokai go about their business from tent to colorful tent. In one section of the camp, a turtle-like creature with a basin of water in its head bargains for cucumbers at a produce stand run by a humanoid with a hundred eyes. In another, a fish with tree tails swims through the air, applying ointment to a scrape on a horned oni. While some of the creatures seem frightful, they're all in very good spirits and seem to get on very well with each other. Uh, Chuji, you see all this. Sanku and Sammy are still asleep. What do you do? I, I punch them lightly awake. Okay. You two wake up. You're like just lying in the middle of the floor of this fucking... Uh, Cool market. <laughs> it's here. Uh, oh. Okay. I was right. <laughs> Good job, man. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's see what we can get. What do you do? What are you gonna do? It's there's a lot of shit going on. Maybe maybe they could look for for the for that big uh, tanuki first. For Rikanzo. Yeah, just because, I mean, they said that they'd say hi, I think. Or at least they, they said that they'd be there, so I think it would be polite to say hello. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys all want to make me a perception or diplomacy check to see if you can find Rikanzo in all of this? Sure. Okay. So what happens is you all get kind of separated from each other. And, Chuji, you come across a group. And that group is standing by an empty tent with just a furnace, a hammer, and some bellows in it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? Before the hammer hops up and starts smitting by itself. Oh. And then the furnace starts f- going off by itself. Ooh. And the bellows just start working. And you realize that these three are yokai. Ooh. Um, and their names are Ora, Hatsuo, and Riko. And they're Sukogami, uh, a type of yokai that um, basically they're made of discarded items that uh, gain life. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're trying to, they're helping doing uh, blacksmithing and stuff. And you're very entertained and you almost get too entertained. Where did the others go? <laughs> what? I get distracted. Where am I? Oh, oh god. Oh, fuck. You kind of get a little bit spirit away, you know? Oh, no. Um, Masami, you come across that uh, tree-tailed fish who you find out is um, named Suri. And uh, Suri here is the resident physician of the night market. And they look at you as you approach us. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, okay. Um, I... Don't you, uh, okay, me. I'm a busy fish, okay? Uh, okay, Dax. <laughs> Just trying to see where Rikonzo was. Oh, uh, Rikonzo? You're gonna find him somewhere. He doesn't do any work, even though he's our boss and he should be doing work. Ugh. You got, hey, you okay? You got some cuts on your face. Let me, let me take care of that. Uh, yeah, okay. Plop, 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 on your cheeks. And <laughs> Masami like sc- like scrunches their nose a little bit and like hey, it's squints. Your cuts are gone. What? Oh. Um. Oh wow! Thank you. Um, Sanku, you however find Rikanzo, and he is in a large outdoor tavern, and he is eating and drinking and just kind of waiting for the next course. What do you do? Uh, I think Senku sort of waves and he goes, Uh, hi. Oh, oh, hey! If it is that little guy, what was your name? Uh, Senku? Senku. Senku. He walks up to you and he gives you a big hug. Okay, Ah, hello. Hey, I'm so glad you came. You want to have some more sake? I won't tell anyone. I'm old enough to drink. Yeah, I know. Come on. Want some candy? Um, maybe a little. Where'd the others go? Hmm? Who? Oh, yeah, didn't you have friends? 
Yeah, I have friends. Uh, well, I mean, I've got Lily here, but... Hello! Oh, hey, one. little guy! Hi, nice to meet you. We haven't spoken yet. Oh, yeah! Hey, what's your name? Well, I'm Lolo Sadagat. Once I was an ancient sea dragon, mighty and ruling the waves. Uh, uh, I'm here now. Oh, hey, that's pretty cool! So, uh... <laughs> hey, did you want uh, some uh, takoyaki? Uh, sure. Okay. Hey, can someone get this guy some takoyaki? Oh, that sounds so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> some awesome. some people come over with takoyaki. Shanku eats balls. Okay. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, well, with this guy? Yeah, definitely. Um, hey! Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway. Oh, hey, we're gonna have some mochi. Do you want some mochi? Oh, hold on. I, I Did someone get this some guy balls. some mochi? Okay. <laughs> you eat some more balls. Does eat some more balls. Okay. Now, what was it you wanted? Uh, oh, um, well, we spent the Do you want some dumplings? Uh, d no, I hold <laughs> I can't eat right now. <laughs> um, we, we spent the day adventuring and we were going to come here. Because you said to come here. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, hey, listen. How about I hook you and your friends up with my, uh, my secretary, right? Uh, Chio, she's a kudakitsune. She's a little pipe fox. She's a very small fox and she can fit into a bamboo pipe. She's what? She's great. She's all right. You'll love her. How about I hook you up with her so you can, uh, get properly integrated with the night market, bro? Uh, sure. We'll even get you, uh, to see how your friends are doing. Uh, I would definitely like to know where they are. Okay, hey. Well, you go get your friends, and then, hey, we'll have, we'll party like there's no sunrise. Because on this island, there isn't. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Sanku, are you going to go find the others and meet this uh, Chio, the secretary, and uh, learn all there is to learn about the night market? I think so. Okay. Sanku... You grab Lolo and dash back into the festivities, the games, the fireworks, the food. You gather your friends and seek out to find this Chio and uncover the mysteries of the yokai night market. This episode of Dice Will Roll would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. Sol Grease Lobo, Nick Roberts, Phoebe Jeebies, Daisy Gilliam, Lux Rexus, Rag, Baron Stormcrow, Sam Stryker, Tony Saunders, Mita, Arave, Varian the Girls, GP Dora, Marshmallowberry, Farrick Falcon, Luis Loza, Ares, Alexander Criswell, May Cohen, Skyly, Kendra West, Generally Tricked, Transgirl Trish, Platonic, Bal Punyon, Joy the Catman, Mashi Wilson Krestovich, Tillin Shark, Glitch HD, Jay Snooks, Zenith Drums, Jonathan Love, Torbjorn, Sophia Varlera, G Barbera, Luke, Gideon, Sarah B, Seth, Ravona Darklow, Kira, Lichlope, Gizmo, Tallison, Cass, Vale McElduff, Eva, Chris Lutman, Rem T. Bright, Lonesome Chunk, Steph, Sean C, Natasha Lumley, Brianna C, Ellie, Jenna Mitchell, Kane Kendrick, Sky Evangeline, Triceratops, Anna Maria, Jordan, Cynical Spinstress, Emily Moderna, John the Bookholder, SS66 Seeker, and Dame Valerie the Turd. If you'd like to see what you can get for helping us keep it rolling, check out patreon.com slash dice roll today!